What's up, Data Pipeliners? This is Data Engineer 1 here, continuing from the last episode on how I write data pipelines. In this episode, we're going to be taking the code that we wrote inside of our Jupyter Notebook, turning them into nodes, bringing them together with a pipeline, and then finally outputting them to a catalog data set. So let's go ahead and get started. And so now what we can do is we can start doing some sciencing on it. Ooh -hoo. Uh, and we can actually use pandas data frame to make this a little bit easier for ourselves. We're just going to import pandas as pd, and then we'll make a panda data frame. And so here, this gives us the time and temp. We can even do like something simple like a plot to watch that temperature over time. Make sure that we set x to time, and now we can see the timestamps on the bottom too. So now that we have a pretty good data pipeline, which cleans the data, as well as analyzes and outputs some analysis of that data, how can we put this into a Kedro project? Well, very, very easy. For starters, we don't have to do that much. We can actually just directly import the stuff from this notebook into our pipeline, right? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to decompose the portions of the pipeline. Number one, we did our data cleaning. Let's make that into a function by itself in order to clean any data that we would like. So all we need to do here is we just define the function um, choose station, right? And then we have a choose station function, which will take in the whole collection of temperature data, um, which will come in as a dictionary. And then we also want to have a parameter for the station ID that we want to choose. And this will come in as a string. And so this station ID will now become this station here. And this temp data will now become this temp data here. And it'll grab those items. Finally, of course, it's going to return the output as a pandas data frame, just to make it a little bit more easy for us down the line. All right. So now we've actually created our cleaning node. Very simple here. In order to put it into our pipeline, if we open up our view cell toolbar options, you click on the tags, and this allows you to add this tag here. And let's add the tag of node. And what that does is it allows us to pick up this cell as a node for our pipeline. So now that we've marked this as node, what we do is we go back to our terminal. Uh, we go into our project over here. And then we can type in Kedro Jupyter Convert. And what this conversion does is it allows us to convert that notebook into a collection of functions for our pipeline. So let's go ahead and rename this notebook to something more clear, all that temperature nodes for now. We'll save this guy. And then now we can do Jupyter convert. We can do dash dash all, and it's going to read all the notebooks from that notebooks folder and create our node file from it. And so here we have inside of PyCharm in, under nodes, we can see our temperature nodes Pi file, and here's our choose station node. And we have one typo here, and this is the reason why I love using PyCharm is that it seems like I forgot to add a colon in the function creation. One of the many reasons why we need to use PyCharm. So now we have this choose station function, and it looks like we also need to import pandas here. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to import it into our pipeline, and we're going to begin creating the pipeline. So we have this choose station node. As its inputs, it's going to take the raw data from the temperature API. So this is raw temp. And it's also going to take the a parameter for the station ID. And so the reason why we want to put a parameter here is that it makes it easier for us to change our configuration. And instead of modifying our hard-coded values in our pipeline, we can just change the station ID here. And our station ID was S109. And then we can output this as temperature. And now we just need to create a new node to take that temperature and turn it into a plot that we can write out to disk. And so what we can do for that is we can just write something very simple in line x dot plot. The fig size is equal to 20 and 12. And then the x value being time. And so the reason why we can do it like this is because we're going to be taking the input directly from the temperature output, right? So directly from the choose station output. And what was the choose station output? The output was a data frame. So we're actually going to be pulling in a data frame to this function. It's going to call on that data frame the plot 
and then from the plot, it's going to output the plottable uh, data frame. Okay, so now let's create a node that'll download the data for us from the API. The way that we're going to do this again is by using our Jupyter Notebook. So very easily, what we can do, we just combine these two nodes together and turn this into a function. Let's go ahead and make the date a parameter with a single default value, and we'll return the parse JSON from the response. Next, we just add the node tag to our cell. And now that we've finished that node, let's make sure that we're properly importing the libraries that we need. This one requires requests, and this one requires pandas, as well as dict. And then we were missing a colon the last time we checked. Now let's save this notebook, and then do another conversion. We're going to overwrite the previous version of the file. And now when we open it up inside of PyCharm, we see our nodes have been updated here. Notice that it doesn't do much with the formatting. It just basically copies those values from those cells into this file here. It's a naive approach, but it is very effective. So now we have a node that gets our temperature data. It takes in a parameter where we can put in any date that we would like. But for now, we're just going to keep it as one single date, uh, and I'll put that as necessary. So here, we're going to go to our nodes, and we're going to add that at the very beginning of this pipeline, get temp data. I should note here that the order of the nodes doesn't really matter. The only thing that really matters here is how the nodes are connected via their inputs and their outputs. You can have these nodes in any order that you would like, but based on their inputs and outputs, that's how Kedro decides to generate the DAG, the directed acyclic graph for these guys. So here we have a get temp with the inputs of none, outputs to raw, and then the inputs of raw temp and parameters station ID to the output to the temperature, and then temperature to the temp plot. So let's go ahead and go and create a catalog entry and grab this temperature plot as an output. So Ketra comes with a built-in cat data catalog entry for matplotlibs. We can actually use that in order to grab it. So let's make sure that we name our catalog entry the same as the output here. So Kedro knows which catalog entry to use. And the type is going to be matplotlibwriter. The file path will be inside of our data slash reporting temp.png. It'll create a temp.png file inside of our data slash 08 reporting folder here. In order to use matplotlibwriter properly, we need to make sure that we are returning a figure object. And so back here in our pipeline, we're actually returning the access subplot. We actually need to add the dot figure in order to properly return the plot itself. So that's all we have to do. And so let's go ahead and give it a catch or a run, and we'll see if there are any bugs that we created along the way. And here it is, exactly the same figure that we saw inside of our Jupyter Notebook. So what we've created here is a very simple conversion from our Jupyter Notebook into a Kedra pipeline. But the truth is, all of the great parts of the Kedra pipeline are not really being taken advantage of at all here. We just have a simple flow from one part to another part, but we're still doing a little bit of hard coding, um, and we're not separating our pipelines properly. We're going to have to cut things off here. In the next episode, we're going to talk about how we start to manage the pipelines in the project itself. So make sure that you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.